These ladies are very, very important to uh, our ability to move forward with 25. It's not going to be easy, I can tell you. I'm learning a lot about it, and uh, Vidu is going to tell us a lot more about 25 and what's involved. I also just mentioned to you that we are incredibly lucky to have Vidu um, here in our county. Um, everywhere I go, she comes with great reviews. She's very knowledgeable. She, she comes from Sacramento, so she has a great contacts, and uh, we're going to need her experience and expertise uh, to get through, you know, getting 25 done. And so anyway, we're very fortunate to have her. So with that, I will hand it over to her and we'll, uh, oh, you already have it right now, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. So, um, as Bob mentioned, my name is Pinu, and we heard that everybody is interested in knowing more about Highway 25. So here we are today to provide an update of what has happened, what's happening, and what is our plan going forward. Before I start, I just wanted to say that we had an in-depth workshop with our board and Caltrans and of course the public back in January to talk about this very topic because there's been a lot of um, information, right or wrong, uh, a lot of assumptions, and then we just wanted to get the information and the data in front of the decision makers so that they can make the right decisions. So we had really good conversation, and one thing that stemmed out of that workshop is a need for us to go in front of the public and do an engagement with the public who voted for Measure G and passed it with an overwhelming majority. So the board thought it was critical for us to have that conversation with everybody, get them all on the same page before we decide what we're going to do next. So this is the first step in the process. You are in our launch, launching pad. So what we would love to hear is your feedback, your questions, your concerns, any thoughts that you have so that we can plan our uh, public engagement plan accordingly. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my board member, Mayor Casey, to see if she has anything to add. Is it going to be Caltrans? Is it 
and then the challenges and the funding and what are the next steps. Keep pointing at the screen and I should be pointing here.
This is the Brown adoption alignment. This is really critical, having this adopt. This was adopted not only by Caltrans and the California Transportation Commission, but it's also adopted by San Benito County and um, the City of Hollister in their general plans. And what's critical about having this route adoption in place is it develops a transportation plan line so that future development, the last thing we'd want to do is to have a bunch of development pop up in the area where we're going to have a future corridor, increasing costs because you've put now homes and businesses in an area where transportation should be. So there was a joint decision between all of the agencies in the county that this was the adopted plan line. Next slide, please. So this is um, the corridor. We've broken it up into three kind of segments. The first segment being that piece between San Felipe and the new Turbo Roundabout. That particular um, segment is uh, off alignment. It's a, it's a four-lane expressway. And then it has the interchange, which is the future long-range vision for 25 and 156 is to have an interchange and separating traffic at that location. The second segment goes from um, that interchange all the way up to, um, uh, sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Um, and it's going all the way up to Hudner. Um, and then there's the little piece, I'm sorry, it's going up to the 10125. And then um, there is the piece that's in Santa Clara County that is the project, the Highway 25 101 interchange. So it's kind of broken up into segments. There's a portion that's in San Benito County that we're partnering with the COG, but there's also the portion up in Santa Clara County that's at the lead of Santa Clara County. And, um, but we do partner with them through the mobility partnership. Next slide. <clears throat> I just wanted to briefly talk a little bit about Caltrans versus San Benito Cog roles. So in particular, there's some roles. Um, San Benito Cog is what we call a sponsor agency. So they're the funding agency. They bring funds to the table, such as Measure G funds or other local funding. Um, Caltrans also plays a role on the funding side. For example, at that interchange that I talked about at 101 or 25-156. There are state discretionary funds that we can compete for. The corridor as a whole is um, eligible to compete for um, congested corridors and what we call um, uh, SB1 funding. And so we will partner, even though San Benito COG is a, considered a sponsoring agency, we partner with the COG to also look for other discretionary funding, whether it's state or federal. Caltrans serves in the role as the implementing, implementing agency, and it kind of wraps implementing agency, owner, operator, and sequin people lead are kind of all interrelated. Um, they're interrelated because we're responsible as owner and operator of the highway to ensure that it meets all of our design guidelines, that when we develop the project, it's compliant with the environmental law, both CEQA on the state side. NEPA on the federal side so that we're eligible for federal and state funds. And then as um, the implementing agency, we carry it through the process. So we would do the environmental document, we would work on the project plans, and we would construct the project. And we would do that in partnership with San Benito Cog, but as we have that responsibility as the owner and operator of the highway. Um, both Caltrans and San Benito Cog and the city and the county and CHP and a lot of other folks participate in our project development team. And so that team is the one that helps drive decision making um, as we go out through, through the environment, through all of the process of developing the project. And then finally, if the project includes transit elements or connectivity to transit, um, San Benito Cog as the local transit operator would be involved in the decision making and funding aspect and implementation for transit uh, features that would be, could potentially be incorporated into the project. Next slide. So this is the Caltrans delivery process. And um, where we are today is in this the light blue for project studies. But there's several steps. And the planning step is um, often it's where we're developing a vision. And uh, we've been in that in that place for some time, and we've moved past into project initiation, um, where we have a scope. We have a scope, we have um, you know, how long we think something is going to take from a scheduling standpoint, and how much it's generally, generally going to cost. 
There's a key point, um, it's hard to see, you see dollar sign and a little milestone sign in between um, those two phases. And that's where we would have, go to the California Transportation Commission for an action. And that's to get programming, to program dollars to take it to future phases. And so we would get what we call an allocation for the next phase, which, would, which is what we're in today. And uh, we did a lot of that allocation work in 2020, 2021. Um, there's some more uh, time extensions and whatnot that we're working with with the CTC um, to get approvals for our environmental phase. And so that's a key point. Um, we are, we're not the only decision maker, the COG and Caltrans, but we do also rely on the California Transportation Commission for some key decisions related to funding. So today we're in project studies. This is where we're doing the environmental document. We're also doing um, preliminary project uh, plans. We're coming up with preliminary cost estimates. Um, well, this is where we'll start to see all the technical studies completed. And, um, and we're starting to look at, well, what are our utility and right-of-way needs as well? And so this process takes between two to six years. I, many of you are familiar with how difficult a um, CEQA process can be for a project of this scale. Super complex, there's a lot going on. And so um, this is something that we do at this phase. This is where we are today, and then once this phase is completed, we'll have a final environmental document and we'll have a preferred alternative. And that's when we have the next critical step where we go to the CTC again and we ask for allocation to go into final design and final right of way. So um, that's a key point. Once the environmental document is completed, we'll take it back to the California Transportation Commission. Um, we'll be asking for the next allocation of funding uh, hopefully we will have been competitive to get grant funding to take us into the next phases and we'll get into design and right of way and we'll start begin what we call the right way process where we get utilities and uh, purchasing of uh, properties and relocations that are associated with uh, impacts of the project as well as final designs, specifications, and estimates that would go out for contract bid. We have the final decision point at that time where we go to the California Transportation uh, Commission again and we're asking for the money to be able to put the project out to bid and go to construction. So um, it's a lengthy process. I could go into a lot of detail of all the little steps of it, but what I will say is that through this whole process, uh, we'll be engaging with the public in particular during the project studies phase, later on during the design phase, and then, um, and then we will also be in close, close partnership with the county, the city, and the COG. And I think it's really critical that those partnerships that we've been developing and working on through these series of workshops are critical to the success of the project. Next slide. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Manu, who's gonna talk a little bit about how the landscape has changed from a state policy standpoint. So just to recap the evolution of this project, we wanted a project, we designed a project, we found out where we want the project to be, we found out we don't have money for it, and that was 2016. So we all gathered together, welcome me, but all of you gathered together, and you passed a measure in 2018 that will give us the money to build this project. And then in 2020, the state passed a bill, the Senate Bill 743, otherwise known as Vehicle Miles Traveled. So this was a bill that was signed into law in 2013 and adopted by the state in 2018. But it said from 2020 onwards, anybody who is doing an environmental study or doing CEQA as part of the environmental study has a different way of looking at transportation impacts than it was in the past. So in the past, it was called level of service. Level of service determines how many cars, how many vehicles are on the road, and what is the delay and condition experienced by each of these cars. The new way of looking at it is 
you don't look at the number of vehicles on the road, you look at how many miles each of those vehicles are traveling. In layman terms, previously, the idea was to reduce the congestion on the road. Now we are saying congestion is okay, we want to reduce the amount of time people spend driving. So that is this new look. And if you look at it, it is really not a, a transportation um, related law, it's more of a land use related law. What the state is trying to get us to do is invest in more infill developments, invest in developments that will help people um, not have to rely on cars, but where you can walk or you can use public transportation or you can use your bike. So basically have much more mixed use development around the cities and the counties. That's the intention of the law. And the idea behind it is you cannot keep building freeways. It will become unsustainable. So we have to be very mindful of where we build. But rather than building, keeping on building freeways to meet the increasing need of people, look at how we can make decisions on the land use so that the need to drive longer distances is now reduced. That was one. Is in 2021, based on the governor's executive order, there was a new policy framework that was put into place that is called the Climate Action Plan for Transportation Infrastructure, or short form CAPTI. CAPTI looks at it from a different perspective. CAPTI looks at it from how should state give funding to projects that need funding. So, Senate Bill 745, 743 looks at it from a perspective of how much is the impact your project is going to cost, and it determines the total cost of the project. CAPTA looks at it from California Transportation Commission, where they're looking at what project should be funded in the future, because there is always more projects than there is money. They're going to look at it from which projects will help advance the state's goal for climate change, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and provide public health and equity. So every project that goes before the California Transportation Commission will be looked at it from these two lenses. So what does that do to our funding? A rough cost of building this 11 mile stretch of roadway to make it into a four lane expressway is somewhere between 600 to 800 million. And that's a rough cost based on what similar projects have cost elsewhere in California. We will not be able to find the total cost until we go through the environmental study that Brandy mentioned, and that's an extensive piece of work. So, 600 to 800 million is our need. What do we have? We have measure G that over the length of 30 years will give us 485 million. That is 30 years is 2048. Now, we will not get 485 million for doing Highway 25. Only 50% of the total cost or the total um, amount that's raised through Measure G is going to be for Highway 25. So we will get about 242 million. And a few, a little, we will get a little bit more money from uh, development impact fees, but I am assuming that's not going to be several hundred billions. So there is a funding gap more to the nature of about 400 million or 500 million that we'll have to come up with. What are our sources? Our source is going back to either state or federal for funding, which is we are going back to the same agency, the California Transportation Commission, asking them to give us money. And they are going to look at it from, is it meeting your capital goals? Is it advancing our climate goals? So that's the challenge that we have today. At a minimum, for us to be a good competitive um, project when we are going for funding, it should do two things. One, reduce as much vehicle miles travel or reduce the amount of traveling we have to do in cars and also look at maximum, maximize the alternate modes of transportation public transportation, other things that we can put into our project, and also create
create mobility opportunity for the underserved, uh, marginalized community. These are two of the things that we need to add into our scope today so that we are strong when we go for our application. Some of the examples other, other agencies around the state have uh, done that qualified them for getting the funding from California Transportation Commission, or CTC, is by including rail, including transit, including um, increasing the frequency of transit and multi-model options. And interestingly enough, some of our um, partner agencies around the state have gone the route of toll facility or um, expressways because these do generate some revenue and they address some of our equity concerns. So these are some examples of how other people have circumvented their expansion projects so that they can be more eligible for funding. So that brings us to our next steps. As I mentioned at the beginning, the workshop we conducted with our uh, board, they understood the need for us to go back to the community, be transparent about what we are trying to do, and then come up with a plan of what projects or what alternatives we should study and look at more further. If there is any reason for us to change the scope or anything else we can do. Step one begins here, and we are reaching out, we are asking for feedback, and we are also asking for some um, volunteers who can help us take this message back to the community. So if you have any feedback questions or any ideas or anything at all, we would be so grateful to you. So, question. 